Hi Cultists and welcome back to our new video on the channel. Today we're going to answer one single question. Can Dark Souls 1 be beaten with priest weapons only? And the answer to that is... Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> There's been people that have beaten this game with all sorts of builds and weapons and challenges. So the real question is if I am able to beat Dark Souls 1 with only my fists. And not only that, actually, I am working on a series and planning to beat Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 with only fist weapons. And I'm calling this thing the Road to Elden Ring series. And everything is in preparation for the DLC of Elden Ring that is going to be dropping on June 21st. I will be streaming the whole process on Twitch, and you can find the bots on YouTube if you want to watch them. And, well, if you want to see me suffer <laughs> for a little bit, um, you can just sit down, relax, get some snacks, and join me through my punch through of Lord Run. The rules of this challenge are real simple. First rule, we can only deal damage with either my fist or fist weapons. Number two, I can also I can use rings, spells, miracles, and anything that I can find to buff my damage. For example, resins, power within, these magic weapons, sounded blade, anything like that. Third, I am not allowed to use shields in combat. I've seen videos of this kind of challenge when they use shields when fighting bosses, and I don't. I think that differs the purpose, so I won't be doing that. And finally, I'm going to be defeating every single boss in the game, including the ones in the DLC. If you like the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. And without further ado, let's begin. We select Cleric as our starting class, and chat comes up with the name of our hero. Rocky Bald Boa. <laughs> okay, that's a nice name, man. We finish up our character, select the master key, our shaped haircut, and our adventure begins. We are at the Under Asylum, lock away until Mysterious Knight throws us the key to our cell. We take our chance to escape, light our first bonfire, and make our way to the first boss, the Asylum Demon. Hi! <laughs> We make a tactical retreat to get our Estus Flask and the key to proceed, come back to face the demon, and after doing a plunging attack and realizing that we do so little damage, we start the slow process of slapping the boss. And after 15 minutes of staring at the boss's ass, the Asylum Demon is defeated. Let's say hi to the chat! <laughs> oh, let me rest and let me drink some water, man! <laughs> After a fade to black, we arrive at Falling Shrine and start looting the area, thanking our Uber before leaving. Thank you for the ride, dude! We start collecting items and also open Petrus's secret stash, go below Falling Shrine to collect the Firekeeper's soul and have our first death of the run. And let's use... oh shit, I, I took too long, I'm gonna get hit. Oh, yeah, I'm dying. Yeah, I'm dead. I took so long. <laughs> We use the master key to get into the Valley of Drakes, roll past the Undead Dragon, and take another elevator up to get into the Argroot Basin. We commit our first act of animal cruelty by killing this crystal lizard. <laughs> One more, you're dead. We continue going up and meet up with Andre, who sells our weapon of choice, the Kestus. We buy two of them, and after admiring our character for a moment, we use a shortcut to go back to the beginning of the game. And the music swells. With our Kestos in hands, we begin the run properly by punching every single enemy we find while we make our way to the next boss. Nope, not this dragon, this is just a set piece. Kill another innocent creature and proceed to fight the Taurus Demon. For this fight, we buff with Gold Pine Resin and take advantage of the tower to do another plunging attack. And after a couple of hits, we defeat the second boss of the game by learning a new strategy. Whenever you have a problem in your life, Punch him in the balls, and it's gonna disappear. After the Taurus Demon, we have another run-in with the Hellkai Drake, but we quickly slip past him to arrive at a new area. We commit more animal abuse by facing a giant boar, and finally we return to Andre to upgrade our weapons. We now move to face the Bell Gargoyles, and this happened. Hello! However... Okay, let's... Oh, fuck off! <laughs> well, we didn't die to the boss, we died to gravity. So fuck that. I will not take that this boss... I'm not gonna count as this boss killing me because that didn't happen. Yep, I died twice to the gargoyles. 
That wasn't a good start. However, at the third try, I was able to defeat them by being more careful. All right. And proceeded to ring the first bell of awakening. Some cutscene with our fellow Rocky Belt Boa triumphantly standing at the top of the world. This celebration was short lived, however, as we still needed to ring one more bell. Feeling a little reckless, we decided to go fight the Moonlight Butterfly, and she proceeded to kick her asses for the next 30 minutes. Wailing on this thing. Oh shit, oh shit, no, 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 no! Ah, crap. Oh. Fuck. Oh. Ah, fuck you. No, we're dead. It was clear we weren't going to win without upgrading our damage, so we decided to leave it for a moment and went back to Fuddling Shrine to pay a visit to Lothric. <laughs> Goodbye, asshole. After that funny moment, we loot his ring and make our way forward. We can skip them if we do this. And this reminds me of the funniest meme of Bloodborne. It's hilarious. After realizing that we have entered the wrong part of town, we deal with the ambush, we go back and equip our new spell, and of course, this happens. Oh, you mother fucking asshole. Okay, we can chuck now two deaths to gravity, so. Thank you, Newton, for fucking us up. We ended the fight with the Capra Demon. The strategy is simply to go after the dogs real quickly, and after they are done, we can use plunging attacks to make the fight really easy. Fuck off! Alright! Capra Demon defeated! With everything we have done so far, we level up our character and end our first day. Here is the man, the legend. Rocky Balboa. To start in the second day of streaming, we make the decision to continue into the depths. Dogs, and I hate them so much, so I'm gonna get my magic fist. We continue our trend by killing some more animals around the area. The cannibal butcher also gets the fist, and with them out of the picture, we claim the large amber. We free Laurentius from the barrels. Hello, man. We get into a fight with Master Splinter. We show him the real martial art of boxing. We'll get into no the local fauna. We get invaded by Kirk, and we show him who's the boss. After that knockout, we finally enter the boss arena and are greeted by the boss. The strategy for this battle is really simple, we just wait for the dragon to slam down and start hitting it in his tiny head, however, we need to be careful as our range tends to make us miss. After doing this for a while, the boss is defeated and we go deeper into a new area. So Rocky Balboa is going to bow to the chat, thank you chat for being here and being so awesome. Now look at this grimy, awful place, look at the green, listen to the not music at all, just like a haunting like wind sound over there. This is Blighttown. Yeah. We enter the horrible place that is Blighttown and start making some progress through the level, and while talking about what content creation is like, this happens. Didn't knew like how deep the rabbit hole the rabbit hole went in regards to the amount of things that you have to to keep in mind when you create content. Oh god damn it. <laughs> For example, no dying because you're rambling. <laughs> has been like I don't want to say learning because I haven't learned that much but at least testing testing oh don't tell me that oh shit I'm trapped oh damn it <laughs> stop eating my what was he munching on and I'm going to... Everything according to plan. Like, riggedy walkway. Oh, damn it. Those. So after that death montage, we continue our way to the wall parasite. Yeah, that's our, that's our way to victory, man. Is it cheating? Probably. Do I care? No. <laughs> Defeated and claim power within, we reach the bottom of the area, rest of the bonfire, and we go all the way up. 
get our Paramancy Flame and go back down. After a trip back to the swamp, we pay a visit to the next boss. Let's get Power Within, let's get Magic Weapon. And let's get in. Let's get inside. For Quailag, this strategy is to buff with magic weapons, stay at her sides, and avoid her AoE. We take the opportunity to reapply our buff, and after some punches, we defeat her. It's done! With the path cleared, we're into Second Belt of Awakening, and can progress the story into Sun's Fortress. However, before leaving the area, we descend into the Demon Ruins, and take care of Cecil's Discharge by giving him a Brofest. And we kill him. <laughs> Just like that. And he falls down to his death. We decide to end the day there and say bye to the chat. We start day 3 by making our way to the Undead Parish with our sight set on complete and sense fortress. However, this was easier said than done. The damage. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that these guys were Olympic jumpers. What the fuck was that? <laughs> After dealing with the guards, we enter the fun part of this area, and we take the time to answer a tough question from the chat. Now, this is why I call this the fun house, that is like a ton, and when I say a ton, it's a ton of traps. Ooh, let me read that question real quick. Hi Nat, what would you say to all those mothers who think that playing is a waste of time? Uh, I see where they're coming from, because I know that, like I know that on, on their age and time and all that, like times change. Like, playing is just like for fun and to like not stress out that much and... Like, it's not an activity that you will consider being like... It's not an activity that you will consider productive, however... I could say, at least for me, like gaming has opened a lot of doors for me. Like, first of all, I am now streaming and making content out of video games, so that's something. For example... If you if your kids enjoy games, for example, what happened to me was I enjoy games so much, but I we were like really really dumb with my mother and I, and I didn't purchase games on on English on Spanish, so I had to play on English, and I didn't understand that shit about anything. So that motivated me to learn English, and that's why I'm talking to you in English right now. <laughs> And of course, having learned English for video games also helped me to get jobs that required me to up to speak in English on, on my country and other countries. So, like, it opened a door for me, like, to actually get a high-paying job. <laughs> so, I wouldn't consider that a waste of time. <laughs> now, thank you for coming to my tech talk. <laughs> Let's continue beating this silly game. We continue to avoid more of the traps in the zone, beat up our first mimic, showing that our boxing is better than their kicks, and make our way to the top of the fortress. Okay, we got to the safe point. There's a giant on top of the, the structure, throwing firebombs. After Rikard got his silly sword technique beaten by our boxing, we buff in preparation for the next fight. The Iron Golem is a pretty easy fight. The strategy is simply to bite at his ankles until he falls. You don't need anything else, but... Hitting like the uh, the talents is oh damn this is bad this is bad this is bad after getting picked up and thrown like a doll we knock the boss off balance and land the final blow okay we we weren't able to to get him to fall but that's fine he's already dead good night <laughs> we buff our stats a little more and pay a visit to an old friend okay you absolute monster you will not defeat me this time. <laughs> okay, this is way fucking better. Holy fuck. I remember when this was a difficult fight for me. <laughs> but not anymore. Come here, you oversized insect. Now, I I love how the, the fist looks flaming with this. It looks so cool. One, two, and three! Fuck yeah! Got it! Moonlight Butterfly down! It feels so good to have revenge of that thing. I hated it so much on the first week. Now that we had our revenge, we upgrade our weapons, making awful boxing jokes. This will be my divine hook. After messing up our assassination attempt on Shiva. Ah, come on. I fucked it up. 
we manage to kill the shadow and get the flip ring. And we cannot miss a chance to mess with the creatures of the area. I'm gonna show you how, how hard they hit. Come on, dude. Hit me. Look at that shit, man. It is pretty much insane. <laughs> I hope one day we're going to punch as hard as these dudes. And you're down. We also attack some spinning cats. What about the worshipping animal thing? Hey. Hey. I am not the one hurting the animals. It's this game, dude. It's... I don't know what's happening, but this game really wants me to hurt little animals. Oh man, now that I think about it, this boss is not gonna help my case. Man, that sucks. Look at this. God damn it. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I am very, very sorry for what is going to happen. But yes, this is the boss. Like, that's one of the most badass things ever. It's like a giant wolf holding a sword with his mouth. I mean, it's so great. After being called out by the chat on animal abuse, we enter the fight with Sif. We take care of her by using our buff and carefully dodging her attacks and leave the area feeling bad about ourselves. Now look at this. They knew what we were doing. Now she's like almost dead. She starts limping. And that's horrible, dude. Like, come on. We already feel bad that we are fighting a dog. Now she's limping. The attacks that she does, like, she doesn't have the same strength. Like, she's now slow. She falls. Man, that's so sad, dude. I hate it. And they even made her, like, a mandatory boss. We cannot skip her, but we did it. Oh, I'm, oh, we are not happy about it. No one in the chat can be happy about this. We killed the boss. Now we feel sad about it. With Sif defeated, we move to face the Hydra. It was not a difficult fight, we just had to hunt down the heads once they were on the ground. One, two, punch. Got it. We kill the Crystal Golem to free Dusk and purchase the Ulasil Catalyst. We call our Uber once again to revisit the Undead Asylum. We kill the Mysterious Knight, do the Peculiar Doll, and fight the Big Brother of the Asylum Demon. But I think we got it. Yeah, we did it. Fuck. Oh, come on. Fuck you. Good. Bye, sir. After that victory, our Uber takes us once again to Farling Shrine, and we prepare our descent into New London Let's Ruins. Let's use the transient course first, and let's punch some ghost. So, who you gonna call? Boom, my fist. We proceed to do some ghost busting in the area, kill this dude to get the key to the seal, and open the floodgates to the city. Ah. <sighs> Man, I'm so happy that we're making so much progress in a single day. Holy. Now we enter a new part of town. We start showing the Dark Raids, who is the real menace of the zone. We loot the very large Amber. And decide to go back to Andre to upgrade our Kestus. We have our weapon maxed out already. So awesome. To take care of the final loose ends, we go into the catacombs, deal with all the skeletons using our holy Kestus, and deal with the most mean boss of the game. Okay, so this is Pinwheel. The, again, easiest boss of the game. And they are going to try to kill us. Oh no. Oh, and he can, like, create copies of himself. Well, yeah, that's... You see. Really hard fight, isn't it? <laughs> like, that was insane. After the easiest boss of the game, we return to the sun and end day 3. Rocky Balboa says hi, thank you for being here. We start day 4 by greeting the beautiful people in the chat. Our fantastic dude right here, Rocky Balboa, about to begin what I will call the middle chapter, the middle part of this, the story for this game. Yeah, it is time for us to go up into Anorlondo and continue the story. We are now at Anorlondo proper, that's our, where our next goal is. We start punching our way through the area, defeating giant knights, mimics, and face the bell gargoyles once Ooh. again. That was really fast, holy shit. We punch this chain to get a reward later, arrive at the bonfire and prepare for one of the coolest fights in the game. Okay, so just a, a quick a quick side note. We're going to face what I am thinking is going to be the, the the most difficult fight in the base game, like without the DLC. This is Ornstein and Smoke, also known as Ren and Stimpy, also known as Pikachu and Snorlax. With that intro out of the way, let's hit 
the dead montage. But I'm going to die if I don't heal. No, fuck. Okay, I was already dead. You didn't you didn't have to pancake me with your ass, dude. Come on. Damn it. Whew. Okay, first motherfucker. What are we playing? No fucking way. Oh! <laughs> we were this close. Oh dude, come on. Snake! Snake! Best reference. <laughs> Okay, so reviewing the strategy for this boss, we just need to have Smo stuck in a pillar while we deal with Onstein, and after that, we deal with the second phase as a normal boss fight. And fuck yeah! We did it, guys! We did it! We received the Lord Vessel as a reward, and we praise the amazing chest ahead. I'm gonna leave here because we don't need anything else from her. We already saw what we wanted to see. And yes, if anyone is thinking about it, those are real. With the Lord Vessel in hand, we prepare to enter a secret area using the peculiar doll that we got in the asylum. Now that we are in the painted world, we start punching our way through the area. And I am floating, I am floating in space. Alright, so Rocky Ball Boy become, has become so powerful that he can just float. You know, there was a guy that tried to pass all the souls, the sacred and the blue one, he did. If he died at any game, he needs to start from the first souls again. The, that is a new level, right? That, that is a, like a new level of mastery. It was no hit. No hit. You're fucking kidding me, right? Like, After a reminder of why we wouldn't survive in the world of Berserk, we finally make progress and enter the boss arena. And there she is. That is Crosby Priscilla. And just for the meme of the community, that is the fluffiest tail ever. Oh wow. She speaks in like some kind of Shakespearean English. Saying pretty much like, hey, you can get the fuck out of here by running, like jumping to the abyss. Or if you want her, because some people want to kill her, um, she's gonna kick your ass. <laughs> we of course are gonna get our asses kicked by her. Let's go. Let's get hit the tail for that matter. They're right, so people with feet fetishes are going to enjoy this boss because the only thing that we can see about her are her feet. Alright, done. We defeated Priscilla. Now let's take the plunge and escape the painting. I might be in a little bit of a problem. Hello there. Please don't kill me. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave, okay? We skip and Rolando, go back to Firelink Shrine, and talk to Fram. Wow! <laughs> I don't know why they decided that that was a good sound for this thing to make. We get swallowed by someone's paralysis demon and place the Lord Vessel on the altar to unlock the final areas. We warp into everyone's less favorite zone, show Kirk who is the boss again, and enter the fight with the last of the Asylum Demon Brothers. This is the third time that we're gonna fight this dude. The only difference is that now he deals a ton of damage and of course he is on fire. <laughs> After promptly dispatching the boss, we enter into a new encounter. For the centipede demon, we move him to this part of the arena to make quick work of him, run past the sea of dinosaur bots, and get into the last part of Lost Isolate, smashing Kirk for the hey, last Kirk. time. Fuck you, Kirk. <laughs> and here comes another death montage with the worst boss of the entire game. Oh. See? Now let's see if I can... Look at that, look at that. Of course I need to... I will have to polish it a little bit. We finally defeat the Bed of Chaos by the power of chat and talking about pizza. We are actually going places, let's jump! We might be able to do this. We are at the stupid boss and we fucking did it! The power of food was stronger and just thinking about food gave me the power to make this shit up. And after that painful victory, we go kill the final boss of the day by giving our hottest steak yet. I'm going to betray immediately what I was saying about being Italian. I believe that pineapple on pizza is fine. Plunging into the abyss, rocking Havel set, we make quick work of the four kings to end day four. We absolutely got this on the bag. Come on, yes! Okay, three kings! Just three kings and we did it. 
we start day 5 by having a change in drip and after farming the crow ladies for hours we now have a new miracle we aggravate the charges of animal abuse by killing more boars and wearing them as trophies we get the key to the dlc and face the crystal knight oh he can power me fuck <laughs> okay didn't know this asshole could actually power me holy shit after the mandatory death fighting seed we escape from prison by killing the worst guard ever please don't kick my ass I said please! I said please don't kick my ass, and that's the first thing you do, come on! And here we arrive at the fight with Sid for real this time. Now, question. Yeah, the clams are here. Fuck me. And now let's punch him in the dick. Wait, is that another clam? No fucking way! We learn our lesson and deal with the giant clams before the fight. Do you want this? Really? Oh, shame. <laughs> what a shame. One, two... And he's down. All right. See, the scaleless is dead. With Sid defeated, we decide to run past the Tomb of the Giants and get into the fight with Nito. Oh shit! Yeah, I forgot about that. We die by being mauled by skeletons, so we retry the battle again after upgrading our holy fist. And now. I can just punch these assholes to death. Drop the shield, you piece of. After taking care of the skeletons, we buff ourselves and defeat Nito with no problems. That's what we needed, like a way to get rid of the skeletons, but we did it. We leave all the boss souls at the altar and prepare to go into the DLC. I'm going to warm up because we're going to the DLC and that's gonna be difficult. We use the broken pendant that we got at the archives, and we are grabbed and pulled into the past. Like right out of the bat, here in the in the DLC, we have a boss fight. Right away. Look at how fast the enemies now react to you. You see? What a bullshit move! Come on! Okay, fuck you. <laughs> we start exploring the royal woods, and an old friend appears. Yeah, the gauntlets. I mean, it's fine. I don't like the the being dirty. As the oh, fuck off! That's Willy Wonka. Uh, okay, look at the, the 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 mask, right? Look at the the creepy smile. That is a Willy Wonka that I don't want to have like near me for any amount of time. So if this guy gets to you and offers chocolate, don't take it. That wasn't chocolate, dude. Oh, ow, ugh. I knew, I knew that I couldn't, I couldn't trust that guy, so you know what, let's kill him. Willy Wonka, why did you do this to me? No mercy for ya! After killing Chester for giving us funky candy, we enter the fight with Artorias. And don't tell me that isn't a good intro. Shit! Okay, that's... No, I fucked up. I really fucked up. Damn. Two hours later. Not gonna happen, dude. It's not gonna happen. Forget about it. I need your fate now, okay? I've proven myself that I can beat Artorias with fist only. So that at least merits a follow. <laughs> After that massive win against the last boss, we delve deeper into the abyss and come face to face with Manus for another death montage. Oh, that's the combo. That's it. No, that's a massive hit. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, man. One eternity later. And after many, many more deaths, we had hope after a new member started to help us. Man, it's kicking my ass. I think I'm going, I'm going to go crazy fighting this man. Ugh, got volleyballed. Fuck me. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it. Ooh. Oh, damn, bro. Oh, praise the sun. Praise fucking everything. Man, we fucking did it. Rocky Balboa, once again. The hero of this fucking thing. I, f I actually feel like a, a mixture of 10 times 
lighter and 10 years o like older at the same time. To be honest, after we defeat Manus, everything that was ahead seems like a cakewalk, so we only go to help us kill Calamit in my favorite cutscene in the game. Good, good. What is bravery without a dash of recklessness? No. What? Epic as fuck, man. I didn't drop the controller, I just want to enjoy that cutscene, man. Oh, man. Look at that. That, that's a that's a touch, right? Like he's blind. He has to feel around to, to get his bow, and his bow is like fucking massive. Look at this. I smell every single time that I see that. God damn. After the best trick shot in history, we do a quick work of Calamity. We're close, good. We're so close. And like, like I said, like, we're gonna punch the dick off this dragon till he's down, baby. He's down. We go back to Anrolondo to deal with the last loose end. Dark Moon Windling. With stupid magic circles that I don't give a fuck about. Done. Easy. <laughs> And to finally end the run, we face Win, Lord of Cinder, with the best song of the game. Okay, that attack is going to punish because it's annoying. Okay, once. Let's go. Okay. Okay, we're getting we're getting there. We're getting there. Two more. Two more. Maybe one if we're lucky. We win. Come on. Okay. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, old man! Oh yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah, dudes! Look at that! Dark Souls 1 Defeated with fist only W Game, W Streamer, GL and Dark Souls 2 Thank you, Dazzle! Thank you so very much for being here! The other guys here, Sand, Kuro, Nat Thank you so much for being here! And now, we're gonna link the fire. <laughs> Man, what an experience! <laughs> we're gonna link the fire to make sure that the story continues in Dark Souls 2. Oh, man. Love Dark Souls, man. I love Dark Souls so much. I'll definitely be watching and giving tips on DS2. Thank you, man. Thank you so very much. I'll, I'll need them. Um, this has been an experience. This has been amazing. This is... My first series on a stream, man. <laughs> this will be the end of me for today. I am very tired. My brain is completely melted. And we have been here for six hours, so... But we did it. We did it. We, we fucking did it, man. <laughs> so, once again, um, before leaving, I want to make sure to tell you that you are the most awesome people in the world. I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being so incredibly awesome. And I'll see every single one of you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>